guys so welcome back long time no see in this video upgrading my 486 vessel walker bus machine better everything better motherboard better cpu better io better video and sound better case and i hope you like it Starting with the CPU, I am going to replace my 80 MHz Cyrix uh, with this beast here, the AMD AM586, uh, working at 133 MHz and on theory achieving performance better than a 75 MHz Pentium. And this is how it looks naked, beautiful little beast. More information about it, uh, it has a built-in multiplier of 4 and it needs almost uh, 3 and a half volts to operate, so if you are going to use it on an old 5 volt only motherboard, uh, you will need external voltage regulation, otherwise you are going to blow something up. It is binary compatible to the 486DX. Uh, but includes some advanced features that are closer to the P5 uh, architecture, uh, which makes this a perfect upgrade for the 486, because Pentium systems were very expensive at the time. The CPU was important for AMD because it provided them with some fresh cash, they needed it because their AMD K5 chip was almost 2 years late, compared to its rival, the Intel Pentium. Mine model ends with W, which means 55 degrees Celsius max case temperature, this makes fan mandatory, otherwise explosion. What else, 16K level 1 cache in the CPU, the level 2 is on the motherboard. For motherboard specific reasons, mine is running at 120 MHz, on some boards you could overclock it to 150, however 50 MHz on a vessel walker bus board is brave. A quick 486 upgrade chart, you can pause it to see better or download it from down below. The motherboard is a 94 vintage Data Expert Corporation made uh, and it's under their brand Expert chip. Exact model is EXP4045, mine is Revision 2.2. Now if you wonder where have you heard this, uh, they sold a bunch of graphics uh, cards long ago under their other brand uh, Expert Core, uh, those guys are still going on today although their business model have changed significantly. They have used some windbound of the shelf chips for the main chipset and labeled it's green on them and indeed I will keep everything in this machine literally green intentionally. I have also upgraded the voltage regulator with a heatsink, they live longer that way. A funny story incoming when you mount the 486 processor, it will go whatever way you like, uh, no matter that the only proper way is to align this dot with the dot on the socket. It is easy to do it now, not that easy with a heatsink and a cooler on it. And what do you think I did? Yep, I mounted it wrong. Started the machine, it uh, did not post, obviously. Uh, then the smell of an imminent failure occurred at which point I turned off everything. To my surprise, uh, the CPU was fine, uh, the smell was from the voltage regulator, it heated up to about 80 degrees, uh, luckily the magic smoke did not escape from there either, and it is still working. So a top tip, avoid mounting uh, with a heatsink on, uh, if you can of course, even if you mounted hundreds of them, uh, you can still do it wrong. What else interesting about the board, 256k of level 2 cache can be further upgraded to 512 by using denser chips, 7 ESA swats, last 3 of them shared with my vessel loved ones, uh, I have also replaced the shitty battery with a coin socketed one to prevent possible future leaks. 
on the memory site for 8 MB ADO memory modules for a total of 32 MB of random access memory. That is a lot for the time and it's upgradable to 128 MB which would have been ridiculously expensive for the mid 90s. Uh, in general, pretty decent uh, midlife for 86 motherboard, I really like it. On the peripheral side I have chosen uh, 32 bits uh, for a VESA input and output controller and a graphics adapter and 16 bits for sound and networking. The graphics adapter is the only thing that I will use from my previous VESA local bus build. Uh, the difference is that I have added one more Mac of VRAM, so now it has two, which is cool. I have a uh, better VESA local bus graphics adapters uh, laying around, but this one is made once again by Data Expert, and also it is green, so I'm going to use it. I initially intended to use this combo VESA local bus input output SVGA controller made by ASUS, but two things. I did not have any SIP memory modules to upgrade it to 2 MEX, and the second reason, most important one, it's not green, it's orange. Instead of it I am going to use a rare 2 EDE interface VESA Windbond base one. As in other VESA IOs, the drive's uh, interface is connected via the 32-bit part of the card, whereas the legacy ports, FOP interface and uh, power goes uh, through the 16-bit part. Even more, it is possible to use the FOP part of a VESA local bus I.O. controller on a 8-bit IBM XT, although not this one, it needs to have an EEPROM to accommodate the soft mods. I will show you this someday. Sound is Quasics all the way, of course the creative Soundbuster 16, with an EDE interface for my gorgeous 4-speed Mitsumi EDE CD-ROM. Uh, below, uh, some bus transceivers, the main sound processor, a Philips amplifier and a voltage regulator above it. All cups are fine, nice sound card in general. Networking 16-bit 3Com Etherlink 3, 10 megabit Ethernet adapter, boot ROM is missing, no worries, PXC not supported anyway. Modem 16-bit, 33.6 bytes per second, about an hour to download a decent quality MP3. On the data side, 1.2 gigs Fujitsu drive, 5400 RPM, very fast, Drive controller supports LBA addressing, so no worries about that annoying 504 MEX partition limit coming from the system bias. FOP is a standard 1.44 MEX 3.5 inch and a Quasica 1.2 MEX 5.25 inch one. I told you about the quad speed Mitsumi CD ROM, those just don't die, I have several of them. All working. The power supply is made of steel, literally. Uh, this might have been a tank in the World War II. Uh, useful button wiring diagram and that danger sign, so cool. I've got the case from the flea market. I have never seen a better 486 case in my life. Uh, the front cover is missing, but it does not matter. I like it even better that way. I think it's super hardcore. As always on these old AT machines, remember black to black, otherwise boom. And some tidy cable management. I am running Windows 95 Plus on this and honestly, hand on heart, if you take out the SSD factor from the equation, uh, it feels like this is working better than a first generation i7 with Windows 10 after those hideous Spectre and Meltdown patches. Thanks Intel. That is all for now guys, uh, two more videos coming this week. I hope you liked what you saw, if so, leave a comment, like or even subscribe. Stay safe, Mr. Caveman over and out.